Vicky lost the love of her life, Lord Zion, possibly not his birth name, but it was on his passport. I've learned quite a bit about him in the last few weeks. They lived a life in full and were survivors in the music business, which isn't easy. Zion wasn't Justin Bieber, but he didn't want to be Justin Bieber, and the band got noticed by various panjandrums from Kerrang! magazine to Radio 2. Vicky played bass, and they had a following around various parts of Europe. Take a look at this fabulous album cover. Yeah, look at that. We won't. That's uh, that's Vicky uh, standing. What is that? Second from right. Uh, we won't hurt you, but we won't go away. That's the strap on the cover. And then one day, Zion went off to get the COVID shot, like everyone from the Queen down told him to do, and he got sick, and his condition worsened. And Vicky found herself widowed in her thirties. They did hurt him, and then. They went away. Vicky couldn't get anyone from the British state to acknowledge her existence. And on the rare occasion that anyone did, such as that chap we talked about last week, the Colossus of Scottish Politics, Glasgow MSP John Mason, it was to laugh at her and sneer at her grief. Well, Vicky is back with us and she has some news. Great to see you, Vicky. And uh, you, you have uh, some, a genuine bit of bad news after getting the cold shoulder from the government for over a year now. Uh, yeah, I have some news finally. Before I do that, I just want to tell you, Zeon was his birth name. Whoa, whoa, I, I, I apologize. I, I, I had assumed, I assumed he was christened Ernest or Wilfred or something and changed it to something cooler. But I, uh, I'm very glad uh, to hear that. So the passport was right in every particular. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot about him from, from you and from his website, which is still up there in the last uh, few weeks. You had a great life and it should have continued for another uh, 40, 50 years. Uh, but you, sh you should have had another half century together, but you didn't. And then the government stonewalled you, and now they've ceased stonewalling. They have. On Friday afternoon, I got a phone call to notify me that I am the first person whose claim with BDPS has been processed and approved. And um, so, yeah, over a year later from when I put in the claim, it, you know, with the death certificate, and it's finally been approved. And they assured me that this would now speed up other um, claims in the processing, which is very good news because a lot of people are really struggling. You know, there are people who are at risk yeah. of losing their houses if they don't get some help soon. <laughs> Well, as we've said, there's over half a, there's over 2,000 deaths and over half a million adverse effects on that yellow card website. And you are the first person to, who will receive government compensation uh, among the bereaved and injured by the, the vaccines. And now, now they're telling you that now they've processed you as number one on the list, they're going to be able to process everyone else. Why, why do you think this has happened out of the blue so suddenly? Possibly because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Um, and with the help of GB News, mm. we've been getting a lot more attention. And um, I do think that the VDPS will be going, oh, thank God she's going to leave us alone now. Um, sadly for them, they have just um, confirmed that we have won the first battle. They have acknowledged causation and uh, it just adds legitimacy. As you know, we've been mocked and ignored and told that we're making stuff up and that there's no such thing as vaccine damage for the last year and a bit. And now this confirms there is causation and we can continue to fight on. The amount they are giving out is £120,000, which sounds like a lot of money. But when you consider I'm going to have to pay a lot of it back to family and loans for uh, funeral expenses yeah. and just getting part through the last year, it's you know not very much money at all. And when there are people who have ongoing medical expenses for the rest of their life, it's nothing. Um, compared to what we could get if we could litigate against AstraZeneca is absolutely appalling. And seeing as they haven't increased the amount since 2007 in, in rate of inflation, it may leave us no choice but to continue attempting to litigate against AstraZeneca or the government, whichever, whichever works. 
pounds, but gone up with inflation, we'll be looking at about one hundred and eighty thousand pounds, which is still it doesn't bring anyone back. But it's a, you know, it's a fairer amount. Well, as you say, £120,000 sounds a lot of money if you get it in a cheque and you deposit it on a Thursday afternoon in your bank. But when you figure out the expenses you've got, how long that cheque has got to last, it's, you know, this is one of those things, if you brought a lawsuit in the United States, it'd be $30 million or whatever, and, and it would be a very different thing. There are, there are lots of people, vaccine-injured people, who can't work, uh, can't drive a car and they are having to sell their homes to pay medical bills. Do you think the government exactly. is serious about expediting these funds? I think they are hoping that it will pacify us, um, which it won't. We're not going to stop until we've got fair recognition and fair justice for all of the bereaved and injured. We at Viv UK, we're excited that we've We've got this far. We really are. But we have no intention of stopping until we believe we have fair recognition and fair compensation for what we've been made to suffer. Well, I can't think of anyone who deserves it more than you to be number one on this list, not necessarily because of your particular bereavement or because of the other people's injuries or whatever, but because the, the way we know each other is I did something on this a few weeks ago and I think you retweeted it and, uh, and, and suggested that you had more to say on this and you've been absolutely terrific on this. As you said, the squeaky wheel gets the oil and you have been as squeaky as anybody, uh, Vicky, and we congratulate you on this and I hope uh, the government of the United Kingdom, which can get money to Ukraine in nothing flat, will actually get money to you mm -hmm. in nothing flat and to all the others. Uh, you're welcome on this show anytime. Uh, we're going to uh, bring you down uh, to London in, uh, I think, a week or two or whatever, so we can have a big in-depth uh, discussion about this. But we congratulate you. It's way overdue. It's an, in it's an insignificant amount of money compared to what the government did to you and made Zeon uh, take, uh, which he shouldn't have had to take. And um, you have terrific memories. They were cut off too soon. This, this is real, folks. Uh, Vicky and Zeon had a lifelong love and basically a stupid shot he had no need to take. Cut that off uh, half a century before it should have been cut off. I, I congratulate you. Vicky, and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you next time on our show. You're, you're a great credit to this cause. It is a great cause, and that boob of a Scottish parliamentarian should be ashamed of himself uh, for denigrating your grief. Thank you so much for joining us again.